live on YouTube. Welcome, this is Snowboard Addiction. We're just getting set up, get our other two platforms going, and then we'll, uh, we'll be doing a balance bar training session. Self-isolation gym training for snowboarding. Rock on. There. Sorry about the delay, YouTube. We'll be right there with you in a sec. There we go. Go three gun? Three. All right. Welcome. It is, is it Tuesday? Tuesday? March 24th. We're in the middle of uh, this coronavirus pandemic, and this is snowboard addiction. We're going to do a gym session. Uh, Self isolation gym training is the stuff you can do at home. Um, if you have a balance bar at home and you have a tram set up or a gym set up, get it out right now. Play along with me. Feel free to answer questions. Feel free to ask anything you guys want to ask about tricks you're having trouble with, tricks you want to learn, techniques for learning things. I'm going to answer as much of it as I can while going through different demos, different tricks. Um, and uh, anyone who doesn't have a gym set up or a tram set up, you can always just get your snowboard out. You can get out your board and bindings and strap into a carpet area. You can feel along a lot of the movements we're going to do without even having to have a balance bar. And some of you guys might have a homemade setup. That's cool too. Get it out. Jump along with us. Um, all I do is to have fun here. Um, Jesse, if you see any questions popping up, hit them at me and I'll answer as many as I can. So for any of you guys who, um, who aren't aware of our products, I'm on the gym board right now. The gym board is the uh, slick face one. It has a P-Tex face like a snowboard, so it's more slippery. And then uh, a lot of you guys I know have the tramp board, which is the, the foam bottom one. And um, the foam bottom one, if you're new to jibbing, this is actually way safer because it gives you way more grip. Um, the slick bottom one, the, the, uh, the jib board, is more slippery, so it gives you a more realistic feel. All right, let's get into it. Let's do some tricks. Fire any questions you guys want. I'll start with basic stuff. Maybe I should start with hard stuff and go to basic. Yeah. Uh, well, the first question that came up was, uh, what's the technique for board slides? All right, let's do it. Technique for board slides. Okay, so let me just show you a board slide and then we'll go into the technique of it. So, this here is the most easy board slide on a snowboard. It's called a backside board slide. So, while I do that board slide, I'm doing a technique called counter rotation. What that means is I, um, I jump into the board slide one way and jump back out the other way. And now I want to show you this without the balance bar. Watch my body. Watch my upper body especially. See how my upper body and lower body right now are twisting against each other during the trick? That's called counter rotation. Let me show you that on the balance bar again. Counter rotation. Now you can also do what's called a board slide to fakey, which is the same thing as a board slide to switch. Board slide to switch. Board slide to fakey just sounds better for some reason. Um, uses a different technique. It actually uses rotation. So, watch this. This is board side to regular. You, you go in one way and come back out the opposite, back to normal. Board side to fakie does this. Board side to switch. And if you watch real closely, my upper body and lower body go in the same direction during a board side to switch. So you'll see it goes board side around to switch. Let me show you what that looks like on the balance bar. Board slide, coming out switch. That's your board slide to fakie. Another time. Board slide, coming out switch. Just so you can compare that, the board slide coming back out forwards again. Board slide, coming back out forwards. It's the counter rotation in these tricks that allows you to board slide and come back out forwards. Board slide, come back out forwards. And when I say you can try this at home, you don't need to have a balance bar. You can just be strapped into a snowboard and feel out these positions right here. You can draw a balance bar on the ground, or you can, um, you can make one out of any log or uh, like, like maybe an old curb or some kind of like, you know, parking stall type thing. Uh, but anything that you can kind of practice this, this trick on, you know? You can even do it on the side of a, uh, like a sofa or a couch. But I wouldn't do that with a real snowboard because real snowboard has metal edges and you might rip up mom's couch and so might not be very stoked with you. But our boards, they don't have metal edges, they're built for training, 
they've brought the trampolines, they've brought the inside use, and um, and you can do this kind of stuff without damaging. You know, you could take this board and jump on Mum's couch. She still might not be very stoked with you, but you're not going to damage the couch. So do it when she's not looking. <laughs> Sweet. Okay, what else have we got in terms of questions? Oh, nice. Tips for front flips and back flips. Right on. Cool. So, um, pretty hard for me to simulate the uh, front flips and back flips here on uh, the balance bar, but the tram boards are excellent for um, simulating front, front flips and back flips. So, for any of you guys that aren't aware, our website, I know some of you guys are new, our website's called snowboardaddiction.com. We have a ton of tutorials on there that teach you how to snowboard. We have tutorials that will teach you anything you want to learn, including front flips and back flips. Um, we have multiple front flip videos and multiple back flip videos. So, for example, when you go to back flips, there's three different ways you can back flip. You've got what's called a wildcat, which is a cartwheel style back flip. You've got what's called a barrel roll, which is your, um, this axis I am right here, going around that axis back flip. And then you've got your traditional laid out back flip, which is a stalled out back flip. Um, we have three different videos that show you all that stuff. Now in terms of tips for learning back flips and front flips, one of the best places to really get the first feel of it is into a pool. So let's say you've got like the small diving board that's like one meter off the ground. Doing a back flip off that into water is a great way to get your first back flip. If you um, can do it into the pool, no problem. I would say the next place to do it is maybe look at trampoline facilities. So you can either use a backyard trampoline or you can go to a trampoline facility. Some of the tramps at trampoline facilities are fantastic these days. And almost every major city has a trampoline facility where you can go and learn things like backflips. Um, it's important to learn like 360s and 540s and that kind of stuff first before backflips. But um, at, when you get to the right level, there's usually someone in the facility who will be able to help you learn backflips. Then you can start doing it with things like the tramp board on and making it feel like a backflip feels like when you have a snowboard on. See, the cool thing about these boards and stuff is you put your stance into the same width you actually snowboard on. You put your angles into the same width you actually snowboard on. You know, if you want to take it one step further, you can actually put your real snowboard bindings on these boards. But they're made with a 4x4 hole system, so any snowboard bindings in the world can go on these except for the burden EST, the burden slider ones. That's a different system, but any other bindings can sit on these. If you really want, you can jump in in your snowboard bindings and your snowboard boots on your own backyard trampoline. Um, a great way to break in your boots too. If uh, Right now we can't snowboard, right? Well, most people can't snowboard. Pretty much all the resorts in the world are closed right now. But you can totally train for snowboarding. So anyway, hope I've got some tips on the old backwards and front flips. The videos on our website are fantastic. They have a lot of good information. Um, that would be better than me trying to explain right now over the video what to a back flip. As soon as we have this tramp, this gym set up here, we're going to do some gym. So, unless um, if any of your questions have come through, hit me up, otherwise I'm just going to keep teaching you stuff. Yeah, awesome. Welcome to everyone watching, um, and thanks for tuning in. I know that uh, there's not a ton of stuff to do at home right now when everyone's stuck inside in self-isolation, but this is something you can do. So, let's get into it. We did um, board, board side before, we did what's called back side board side. I'm going to follow that with what's called front side board side. So, the one I did before, this is called backside board slide because as you approach, the rail is behind you on your backside. Backside board slide, okay? If you're approaching the rail and it's in front of you, it's now called a front side board slide. Now, when you're snowboarding, there's some boxes and rails where you can just approach straight on. Um, and in that case, it's, the name becomes a little bit ambiguous. But uh, when, when you have like down rails or advanced rails, you have to approach them to the back side or the front side, and that's where the naming of the trick comes from. It comes from skateboarding. So right now I'm gonna do what's called a front side board slide. So front side board slide, it's in front of me as I'm approaching, and I jump up into the board slide, sliding backwards down the rail. Sliding backwards down the rail. So as I'm sliding, I'm actually looking forward down where I'm going. <laughs> so, I did not ollie high enough onto the beach then, and um, told my dad, but it's still safe. Give yourself enough room, be safe. Here we go, front board. Front board. 
So, I'm going to show you what that looks like without even the balance bar. My board's this way with my upper body, and I'm looking where I'm going. So my, my upper body's twisted this way, or my lower body's twisted this way, and then back to alignment to land. So that's called counter-rotation, upper body, lower body, twisting against each other to make that, that trick. Here we go, front board. Front board. Now you can also do a front board to baking, front side, board side to baking. This is a very uncommon trick. Not many people do it. Because it's hard to see where you're going. So a front board to baking, instead of using counter rotation, you use rotation. So if you watch my upper body and lower body now, they both move in the same direction throughout the trick. That would be called a front board to baking. Let me show you what that looks like. Front board to baking. Here I am, switch, switch front board to baking. So there's not much counter rotation in that trick. The upper and lower body are moving in the same direction throughout the trick. Okay. I'm going to get in, I'm just going to start naming tricks, and whenever Jesse stops me or yells out, because it's a good question, I'll start answering that question. Alright? Right on. Got a trick call out. Trick call out, yeah. Front no side pretzel out. Front no side pretzel out, okay. So I'll do both. I'll do front board pretzel and back board pretzel. So this is the front board pretzel. Okay. Now what a pretzel is, is when you're 270 out of the trick. You come on one way and 270 back out the other way. So this is front board pretzel. See that? Coming back up. And um, this is back board pretzel. So back side board side pretzel out. So instead of just coming out normal, you're 270 out for the pretzel. Here we go, backboard pretzel. Boom. Now I want to show you how that happens for any of you guys are wondering how to do a pretzel out. Because it's something you can do at home. And pretzeling out is quite a bit harder than just coming out normal. So, if I was to do a backside board side, come back out normal, that's pretty easy to do. If you want to pretzel out, you have to counter rotate a lot. Like you really have to counter rotate your body. So if you watch me, counter rotate heaps, like a lot, allows me to put the 270 out at the end. So that 270 is all done with counter rotation. Again, here we go. Back forward, 270 out. Okay, pretzel out. That's what it looks like in the bar. Pretzel out. Cool. I mean, and uh, I'll show you it again with the front board pretzel. Front board pretzel. 270 out. Cool. That, that should answer the question of pretzel and trick the press, thank you. Um, I want to show you something. Most of you guys are probably aware of this. So this is the WTP rail extension. And um, when you're first learning all these tricks, you can just you can just jump on without this piece. It's way more stable. It simulates more of like a box, um, balance, you're required in a box. So it's easier to learn tricks without this on. This is for challenging you. When you want to get a real good workout, you want to get real good balance, chuck it on there. It just takes more practice, more balance to be able to hold it because it's not a flat surface, it's a rounded surface. So um, yeah, that's how you're going to train your muscles even better. So when you do this, you're getting all these uh, these muscles in your legs just firing. Same balance, same movements as when you're snowboarding. Okay. I'm gonna take a breath, a breath. Do a drink of water because it's hot. I'm trying to do this and then speak at the same time. Shout out to everybody watching. We got live on Instagram, live on Facebook, and live on YouTube. We're live on three platforms here with just me and Jesse. Self-isolation. We are, we're hiding away from coronavirus. We're up here in Whistler in Canada, and um, the mountains closed, obviously. So there's not a ton to do, but you know, you can totally do this in self-isolation. You can do this at home, and it's not going to affect anybody. So big, big thanks to all our customers who have our gear. And by the way, if you don't have our gear, we have shipping warehouses that ship our products out. And at the moment, they are still shipping our products out. So you can actually still go on and buy this stuff on our website. 
We have already sold out of the training mats, so you can't get the mats right now. Um, you can pre-order them, but we don't have any to ship right now. We're getting close to selling out of the balance bars. So if you want to get a balance bar, get in there quick, because I think there's something like 59 left in the States. They're going to sell out quickly. So just production has slowed down. In fact, production of most of our products is currently stopped. So we are probably going to run into more supply issues down the road. Right now, everybody's still shipping. People are still getting their products. And big shout out to all the customers who bought stuff last week because um, you're helping us out, plus we're hopefully we're helping you out. We're giving you guys something to do in this time when you guys don't have a ton of activities to do. None of us can really snowboard. We're jealous of any of you guys can. And, uh, and um, we're just training and having as good a time as we can. So let's see if there's any more trick shout outs right now. Yeah, uh, Lawrence Tria has just asked, what's the distinction between blunt size and nose and tail size? Perfect. Good question. Okay, let me show you that. So, um, I'll do it from both the front side and the back side so you can see the difference. So, this is a front board, front side board slide. Now, technically, you're sliding in the middle of your board. You see, I'm in the middle of the board. This here is the front side nose slide. So, you see, I'm sliding over the nose part of the board. And this is the front blunt. Front blunt is where the board goes all the way over onto the tail, so like this. That's your front blunt. So, let me show you that again. Front board. Front side nose. And front blunt. So that's the difference. Now let me explain the few technicalities behind them. Front side board slide and front side nose slide, basically the exact same thing. And most people who do this will call that a front board. And that's fine. So front side board slide, whether you're on your nose or your center of your board, doesn't matter at all. Same trick, name it the same thing. Um, no one really calls this a front side nose slide. Okay? But front blunt is definitely people call it a front blunt. So if I was to come over here and go board it onto the table, it is definitely a front blunt. So that's no longer a front board. Okay? Um, um, so, if I'm going to go all the way over now, I'll show you the same thing from the back side, and then I'm going to show you how to learn these different tricks. So, I'm going to the back side. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to slide over the middle of the board. Back board. So, sliding in the middle of the board is back side board slide. Sliding on my front foot, back side nose slide. And if I go all the way over onto my back foot, backside blunt slide. Backside blunt slide. Okay? So, um, you can slide on any part of the board you want, and you can do whatever feels good for you. Blunt slides are kind of popular right now, they kind of look cool. Um, and nose slide and board slide is basically the same thing. People don't really differentiate between them a lot. So, just to let you guys know, if you're doing a board slide, over your nose, or you're doing a board slide in the center of your board, it really doesn't matter that much. No one's really, no one's really checking up on you. But what I want to show you is how to learn those different, those different um, moves. So I'm going to pop this off, and I'm going to jump up on the balance bar. So you guys can do this at home, and if you don't have this, just do it on your carpet, do it on your snowboard. If you guys are doing this at home along with me, tag us on Instagram or share it to our Instagram so that we can, uh, we can put it on our Instagram to show, show love to you guys training at home on our products. So if I jump up here, I'm now in the, uh, just in a 50 50. I'm changing to a board slide. Okay, there we go. Now I, I took the top piece off because we're going to balance here for a long time. This is what I want to show you tail. So that's a bad example. Tail, nose. Tail, nose, center. Nose, tail, center. Now the point I want to make here is that whether I'm sliding on my nose of my board, or my tail of my board, or the center of my board, my body's weight is directly on top of the feature. And that's really important when you're snowboarding, because whether you want a blunt slide or no slide or two sitting out, as long as you can put your weight up on top of that feature, that's what's going to make you balance and in control to the end of the rack. 
So if I jump back to 50-50, I'm going to show you this. Center, close, tail. Lost my balance. Tail, close, center. Okay. Now I'm going to show you how I'm doing that. If you can imagine there's a pole right now that goes through the top of my head, down through my body into the center of my board. If I keep my weight on that center of that pole and, and rotate around that pole, that's what part of the board I'm going to slide on. So this is right now center of the board. Pole right down the middle. If I shift that pole into the front foot, and I have a pole that goes down my, down my head, through the front foot into that part of my board, and I rotate around that pole now, what's that? Show you that a bit better. Weights on the front foot, rotating around that front foot. That's how I'm sliding on the nose. If I take that pole all the way to my back foot, pole's going down through my head, through my body, through my leg into the back foot. I'm going to rotate around that pole, sliding on the back foot. Okay. Now the reason that's hard to see is because right now when I'm jumping, you just have to make that movement position in the air. So I can be weight central right now. But as I jump to my nose, while I'm jumping, in the air, I'm now rotating around that position over the front foot, back to center to land. Rotating around my back foot, back to center to land. Okay? So, for you guys watching, whether you want to slide on the front foot or the back foot or the center, it's all about keeping your weight on top of the feature and pushing the board out in the direction you want to be. Rotate, what part of the board are you rotating around? See, my weight right now is on top of the feature, but over that front foot. Now it's on top of the feature, but over the back foot. Now it's back to 50-50. Cool. So, hopefully it answers the questions I was talking about with that nose slide, blunt slide, and how to start learning that with this. With this. And anyone at home, you can be doing this with your snowboard on. You can literally be at home with your snowboard on, jumping these positions, without this gear, to feel it out, right? You can draw it and get a broomstick. You can put a broomstick on the ground, jump on the broomstick to feel out some of these positions. And then down the road, get, either make yourself a balance bar, or go to the hardware store and make one, or buy us, pick us up. This is a great product. It's fun. It's great. You can do it in self-isolation. You know, who knows how long we're going to be self-isolating for here? Could be a couple months, could be longer, could be two weeks, who knows. But anyway, right now our products are still shipping out, and um, big love to all the customers who have been supporting us. And if you want to get on it, get on it. Sweet, okay, so anyway, uh, what are the questions we got right now? Uh, I got a question. Uh, about your stance, is that too wide for jibbing? So, my stance, to give you guys a reference, I'm 5'9", 150 pounds, and uh, that in, in metric is 175, 1, 1 meter 75, and I think about 68 kilograms, roughly, give or take. Um, and uh, my stance is about 21 inches wide, and my feet are at 12 degrees on my front foot, and you get a nine on my back foot. Now, I would call this stance a very normal snowboard stance. If you were to take an average of a bunch of people, this would probably be fairly, fairly in the middle. Some people like to have a stickier stance. And if that's one of you guys, stance is all about the preferences you like. Some jibbers, like hardcore jibbers who just jib, have um, narrower stances in this for sure. I definitely see that sometimes on the mountain. Um, if you were to look at a lot of the contest riders, when I say contest riders like X Games, um, Burden Open, Olympics, all that, you'll find most of the guys riding slope style and big air and half pipe are riding a very similar stance to what I'm riding. Very similar in width, similar in angles. Um, some people might be 15, 15, some might be 15, 9, some might be 12. You know, like, and stance width, some might be 21, some might be 23, some might be 22. It all depends on your, your, your height and what you like. But if you have no idea, Take a reference from me if you have no idea. So 
let's say that I'm in one, I'm five nine. If you're five nine, try out a twenty one inch wide stance and see how it feels. If you're taller than me, try a twenty one and a half or maybe twenty two. See how it feels. And if it feels too wide, bring it in. You got to go on your feeling, your gut feeling, what feels comfortable for you. Um, if you're shorter than me, take a little bit narrower stance than me and see how that feels. Okay. Um, I, that's all I can do without being there to help you. Because if, if you're in front of me, I can help you and give you my opinion right there and then, but it's pretty hard to do if I can't see your writing. So any of you guys who are members of our website, you can submit videos to our uh, to us, info at snowboardaddiction.com, and we will analyze any videos you send to us from members, people who are part of the, the, the streaming membership, um, and we'll give you feedback on anything you want in writing. It's just a, a service that we offer you guys because you're helping us, you're, you're being part of our team, and we love that. So um, if you're not sure, hit us up, join the membership, and, um, and ask us some questions like that kind of stuff. Anyway, in this live stuff, I'm happy to answer anyone's questions, but I just can't always see you or what you're doing. Um, but yeah, so back to the question, is it too wide for gymming? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. All the guys riding Olympics, X Games, um, Bird and Open are riding very similar stances to what I ride, um, and uh, they're doing jumping, jibbing, they're doing, they're doing what? You know, the full package of some of So hopefully that's the question. All right. What do we got going on? Uh, Let's do some more tricks. Yeah, more tricks. Okay, we're going to the presses. So I'm going to do nose and tail presses, and then do like a bunch of 180s, 180s in, 180s out, etc. And after that, I'm going to do some change ups, because change ups on this thing are really rad. So, starting out, nose press, tail press, backside tail press. Side nose press, nose press, 180 up, switch tail press, 180 up, backside tail press, 180 up, 180 into nose press, coming out, so hard way into nose press, oh I didn't get out of that one very well, <laughs> so I know I'm kind of jumping here and knocking your tips on all these tricks, on our website, snowboardaddiction.com, we have a bunch of even uh, training board tutorials too, and you can learn individual tricks. So, the one, ones that I'm doing like a uh, tail press, 180 up, we've got both a snowboard tutorial for that trick and a training board tutorial for that trick, and the other ones too. So I'm gonna get a bit of balance, keep it, uh, keep it busy. Hopefully you guys are home training along with me and trying some of this stuff out. So, here we're gonna go. I'm gonna start with just 180s in, 180s out. 50-50, 180 up. Okay, I'm going to do one with rotation and one with counter-rotation. So this one's rotation, where I rotate in, carry on around in the same direction, whereas this one is counter-rotation. 180 in, counter-rotate, 180 back out. Now I'm going to do that with presses. 180 into a press, rotate the whole way around. 180 into a press, counter-rotate back to normal. I'm going to make it more difficult for myself. Uh, why not? Get my exercise for the day. <laughs> on, the, on the balance bar here. Okay, here we go. Tail press. Come on. Switch. So switch front side 180 into a tail press. Coming out. Nose press. Front forward. Out. So I'm giving you a few change ups here just because it's fun. Nose press. Nose press, front front. Oh, almost fell off that one. Tail slide. Oh. I'm, just mixing, I'm just jamming now. I'm just jamming until someone yells a question at me. Switch tail slide, change up the front board. Right. Or back board, change up the front board. Yeah. Alright, any questions coming in? Um, yeah, clarification on why the uh, difference between the white top piece and non-white top piece. 
Oh, for sure. Good question. I just want to give a quick shout out to YouTube. If any of you guys are answering questions, asking us questions on YouTube, we don't have anyone manning that video. It's sitting on a tripod. So we can't see if any questions are coming in on, on our YouTube over there. That's uh, self-isolation filming, advanced technology, holding a phone. But uh, to bring clarification up the top piece versus the base, the base is more like a box. So the balance required for the base is much more basic. It's uh, easier to do. Whereas the balance required with the white top piece is more advanced. It's more of a round top. So when you want to get challenged and you really want to dial in these tricks and your balance, the top piece makes it much more difficult to remain in balance. Doing a forward slide, holding it, coming out. One slide, holding my balance, change up. All right, doing a bunch of change ups. A good question. I uh, got another question. A little different. Uh, Jack Caswell asked, how long have you been boarding? Long time, buddy. <laughs> no, I, uh, I've been boarding for 26 years, so a long time, most of my life. I've been living in Worcester now for 16 years. So I moved over here after I finished school and um, pretty much uh, became a snowboard instructor, worked in a restaurant, snowboarded every day, and then eventually started snowboard addiction, making tutorials to help you guys ride better. And then eventually we morphed that into making these products to help you ride better. And um, you know, you can buy these products all year round. The cool thing about it is right now, you can still use them while you're at home. If you've got a backyard trampoline, go and get on there. If you've got room in your living room, jump out, jam out. And then, uh, yeah, 26 years, long time. Uh, trick follow, I think we've done it the, before, but uh, back one, two, seven. Back one, two, seven, yeah, nice, cool. Okay, so, we were doing before, we did, um, we did pretzels, but the trick you're asking for is different than a pretzel. It's called a back one, two, seven. So back means backside, blunt is going to the back foot. So backside, blunt slide, and 270 out this time carries on rotation. So you'll see I go back blunt, that was to fake it. Back blunt, 270. Goes in the same direction. Back blunt, 270. One more back blunt, 270. Back blunt, that one didn't work. So I'll do it once more. Back blunt. 270 up. Now, let me build on that. This is almost the same trick, but this is called a front tail 270. Very, very similar. Coming in from the front side, front tail 270. On the balance bar, I find the front tail easier than the back one, but it's cool to be able to learn both and do both. Front tail 270 up. Cool. And hey, while I'm at it, I'll mix it up and do the opposite. Front blunt 270. So now we're going front side to blunt side. Front blunt 270 out. Front blunt 270 out. Or back tail 270. Back tail 270. So the difference is back side, tail slide. 270 out. Rotating around in the same direction. Good question. Thank you. I'm going to take a quick drink of water while we get the next question. So, any of you guys are at home, I hope you guys are out trying this with me. Um, I know a ton of you guys have it. It's obvious for some of you guys. Our website, snowboardaddiction.com. We ship this around, we ship this all over the world. We've got a warehouse in Vancouver, Canada. We've got a warehouse in California. We've got a warehouse in Pennsylvania. We have a warehouse in England. So we ship the stuff all over the world. And uh, we do free shipping in America, free shipping in Canada. Um, fairly cheap shipping around the UK. And then outside of those places, it gets a little bit more expensive. But we do have some distributors. We have a distributor in Australia called Boardworld. So we check out their website, boardworld.co.au, I think. And we have a company named DTM in China. They, um, they do our Chinese distribution. And uh, in Europe, we now have a couple. Transcendental. 
Resovasm, what country is that one? Switzerland, Resovasm. So you Google Resovasm if you're over in Switzerland. And then in, uh, in Scandinavia, I think it's trampoline is specialist. And it's, maybe that's France. So I, I have to be able, I'm not up to date on all the distributors, but on our website, you can check it out on our website, we have a list of the different distributors on there. Sweet. Uh, Kimberly XO, would this be the best way to start learning if you've never been in a park before? This is a fantastic way to start learning if you've never been in a park. So what's it gonna do is, you're gonna start building your muscles anyway, which is gonna make your stronger snowboarder full stop. But it's also gonna give you the skills of basic park skills. So when you first go into the park, the first couple of things you're gonna do are a 50-50 and a straight air. So a straight air is basically just a jump, just going up a jump with nothing. Getting on a trampoline, on the tramp board, you can just practice jumping. You can get your balance. Find out your, your center of gravity while you're flying through the air. And then you can start doing things like grabs. Grabs are like when you go in the air and you grab the board. This is very basic park skills. Trampoline is fantastic for learning those first grabs. After that, you start getting things like 180s, 360s, shifties, 540s, flips. You get into really advanced stuff, but there's tons of basic stuff that you can learn on a trampoline. And for the balance part, if you're first wanting to go in the park, take this off. This is more of a simulation of a box. It's wider, it's easier to balance on. This is what a 50 50 is. 50 50 is when the board and the box are lined up together. That's one of your first park tricks. So just practicing jumping on here, looking at your body position, are you balanced? Maybe doing this a few times, jumping up and down, seeing if you can remain your balance. It looks easy when I'm doing it because I've done this a lot. Um, we did a couple of sessions last week with a live customer who hadn't used this before. And you'll see that the difference is quite a bit different for people who are new to it. You can also do backs at 50 50, backs at 50 50. If that's easy, chuck on the piece, build those muscles. Fantastic stuff for the first time in the park. Also fantastic for advanced park riders. Good question. Uh, so, Jared asks Can you use the jill board on the mountain? <laughs> you can. It's not designed for it. But you can. Um, doesn't have any edges, so it's not great at turning, especially on ice and, and snow. There's no metal edge, so it's not going to have very good grip. And saying that, we have potentially used it on the mountain. In fact, Jesse, who's holding the cameras, he's used it on the mountain for sure, and did some cool methods and grabs on like a fun day or up in a spring day. Um, not designed for the mountain use, but for like a joke. Or like we're having fun, yeah, you can. But um, either the day, a snowboard performs better on the mountain. And the whole point of these products is to practice snowboarding so you can be a better snowboarder. This is the idea, is you're at home, you practice this, you build your muscles, you get strong, you understand the movements, you understand the balance, and then when you go snowboarding, you can learn new tricks faster and quicker. So, it's not everyone can snowboard all the time. Like, let's say you snowboard like, if you snowboard 30 days a year, that's pretty good. There's a lot of people that don't get to snowboard 30 days a year. So this here means of those 30 days, you can, um, you can really crank out your pro progression, learning new stuff way faster than, you, than if all you did is those 30 days in the mountain. And if you only do 10 days a year on the mountain, this is gonna make those 10 days, it's gonna maximize those 10 days. It's gonna mean that you're stronger, you're gonna be able to ride all day on those 10 days you have. And if you have 100 days on the mountain, that's awesome. Good stuff. Keep at it. If you get 100 days in the mountain, you're killing it. That's wicked. Now, like, we live in Worcester, and most of us around here actually do get 100 days in the mountain because um, we've chosen to live in mountain towns. And you know what? If you really want to, you can live in a mountain town too. So that's your choice. Right now, it's not open, so it's not that fun right now. But we're all sitting at home. Everyone's self isolated. This is something you can do. And um, just to recap, we are. Uh, we sell these products out of fulfillment warehouses, and the fulfillment warehouses right now are still shipping the product, so you can get on our website and buy some of this stuff, get it shipped to you, play around. I'm gonna keep doing these live videos to help you guys progress. Before we sign off, we'll do a couple of harder tricks just to uh, keep it interesting before we go. People always wanna see the 270s on, so I'm gonna do some 270s on, some varieties of 270s on. If you wanna get good at 270s on, first learn 180s on. So this is a 180 on. 
now what I'm going to do is I'm going to 180 on, but try to get an extra 90 degrees. So what I mean by that is right here, I'm going to 180 on, put in the air, turn that ball an extra 90 degrees right before it lands. So you'll see, thinking 180, I'm turning at 90 into that 270 on. That's what I'm going to do on the, on the feature. <clears throat> Think 180, put an extra 90 degrees on right at the end. Coming out to regular. So that's a 270 on coming out regular. We'll do the same thing again. Now I'm going to do a 270 on and come back out the other way. So I'm using a little bit of counter rotation in this trick. 270 on, coming back out, switch that time. Okay? Just show you that difference again. Going to use more counter rotation as I land on it to come back out switch. So that was just one variety of a 270 on. I'll do another variety as well. This one is the hard way front side 270. And I'm not going to explain it so much. I'm just going to get in and do it because last week we did a video where we explained it. If you go back on our, um, our Facebook, you'll see that video and you can go through it if you want to learn the steps. So hard way front side 270. Again, hard way front side 270. So those two I did rotation, carried on the trick. This time I'm going to stop it with counter rotation. Come back out switch. So all this is different body positions I'm using. And it's good to be able to learn both. Because if you learn both, you're refining those muscles. You'll be able to make those last minute changes, those last minute decisions in your head while you're actually snowboarding, which allows you to stomp the trick stylish right away clean sweet so i'm going to pretty much wrap it up from there and this is the last minute burning questions nope um this is a self-isolation gym session you can do this at home you can use our products you can have your own homemade built products um you can do it with your actual snowboard whole point is getting out there doing something fun and um and uh training for snowboarding while we uh while we can't snowboard make us stronger for next year I'm Ned Viper from Snowboard Addiction, and I'm hoping you guys are all hanging in there through this, uh, this virus outbreak, having a good time. Our goal is to improve your riding. Right on. Woo. See you later, YouTube.